First, I would like to thank you very much for choosing this video to watch out of the many videos that have been shown on your YouTube page. I very much hope that by trying to improve my video content, it will help you to create unique ideas for you to have beautiful, decorative cement products for your garden. In today's video, I will make two flower pots. While you guys see how to make, I'm going to read you a few stories that I find very interesting. Hope those stories also help you feel more interesting when watching the video. The first story talks about the importance of punctuation. Different punctuation means completely different meanings. An English professor wrote the words, Woman with our her man is nothing, on the blackboard and directed his students to punctuate it correctly. The men wrote, Woman, without her man, is nothing. The women wrote, Woman, without her, man is nothing. <laughs> a girl named Gloria, writes a letter to a boy named John. She wrote an unpunctuated letter to test John's intelligence. John read Gloria's letter and was delighted. But a friend of John's, who had a crush on Gloria, translated the letter in a different way, much to John's concern. And here is the letter where John added punctuation. Dear John. I want a man who knows what love is all about. You are generous, kind, thoughtful. People who are not like you admit to being useless and inferior. You have ruined me for other men. I yearn for you. I have no feeling whatsoever when we're apart. I can be forever happy, will you let me be yours? Gloria. And this is the second letter where John's friend added punctuation. Dear John. I want a man who knows what love is. All about you are generous kind thoughtful people, who are not like you. Admit to being useless and inferior. You have ruined me. For other men, I yearn. For you, I have no feeling whatsoever. When we're apart, I can be forever happy. Will you let me be? Yours, Gloria. Oh my god! Wow! The second story is about two friends going camping. Two campers are going through the woods when a black bear suddenly appears in the clearing in front of them about 50 meter. The bear sees the campers and begins to head toward them. The first guy drops his backpack, digs out a pair of sneakers, and frantically begins to put them on. The second guy says. What are you doing? Sneakers won't help you outrun that bear. I don't need to outrun the bear. The first guy says. I just need to outrun you. Next is the story. The river is not deep. A stranger on horseback came to a river with which he was unfamiliar. The traveler asked a youngster if it was deep. No, replied the boy, and the rider started to cross, but soon found that he and his horse had to swim for their lives. When the traveler reached the other side he turned and shouted. I thought you said it wasn't deep. It isn't, was the boy's reply. It only takes grandfather's ducks up to their middles. <laughs> this fourth story is a story about an excellent translator. I can't stop laughing after reading it. A famous writer who was visiting Japan was invited to give a lecture at a university to a large group of students. As most of them could not understand spoken English, he had to have an interpreter. During his lecture he told an amusing story which went on for rather a long time. At last he stopped to allow the interpreter to translate it into Japanese, and was very surprised when the man did this in a few seconds, after which all the students laughed loudly. After the lecture, the writer thanked the interpreter for his good work and then said to him. Now please tell me how you translated that long story of mine into such a short Japanese one? I didn't tell the story at all. The interpreter answered with a smile. I just said, the honorable lecture has just told a funny story. You would all laugh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Next is the story of two students sitting at the same table in the classroom. Bob and Joe sat next to each other taking a test. 
When they finished, the teacher called them up to the front of the room and said, Boys, I will have to give both of you a zero on this test. Why? They wanted to know, though Joe was shifting uncomfortably. She said, Your answers were too nearly alike. One of you cheated and the other one let him do it. What makes you think we cheated? Bob asked. That could have been a coincidence. The teacher said. I might have believed that if it wasn't for the fact that when you became to question number 10, Bob wrote in, I don't know, for the answer, and you, Joe, put, me neither. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> this sixth story advises you that when you have small children, don't wear too short skirts. In the spring fair, a four-year-old child who got lost was crying. A security guard came to console him and said, If you don't want to get lost, you should have gripped your mother's dress. The boy cried sniffingly. But my mother's skirt was too short for me to grip. Do you want a free haircut? Would the following story be a good suggestion? A man entered a barber shop with a boy of five or six years of age holding his hand. He was in a great hurry and he asked the barber to cut his hair first and later to cut the boy's hair. He can wait, I want you to cut my hair first. He said. The barber did as he was told and when he has finished the man got out of the chair and the boy tool his place. The man excused himself and said that he would be back in a few minutes and would pay for them both. Then he left and the barber began to cut the boy's hair. When he had finished he picked the boy up and placed him in a chair to wait. He gave him a magazine to look at. A half hour passed. An hour passed. At last the barber said. Don't worry, your father will be back soon. My father? Said the boy. He isn't my father, I was playing in the street and he came along and said, Come on with me, little boy. Let's go into this barber shop together and have our hair cut. Do you have your own family? When you and your partner first met, have you ever lied to get the other's affection? The eighth story I'm going to read to you is going to be a lie that I think even a lie but it's not blameworthy at all. He met her on a party, she was so outstanding, many guys chasing after her, while he was so normal, nobody paid attention to him. At the end of the party, he invited her to have coffee with him. She was surprised, but as he was polite, she promised. They sat in a nice coffee shop, he was too nervous to say anything, she felt uncomfortable, she thought, please, let me back home. Suddenly he asked the waiter, would you please give me some salt? I'd like to put it in my coffee. Everybody stared at him, so strange. His face turned red, but still, he put the salt in his coffee and drank it. She asked him curiously. Why you have this hobby? He replied. When I was a little boy, I was living near the sea, I liked playing in the sea, I could feel the taste of the sea, salty and bite, just like the taste of the salty coffee. Now every time I have the salty coffee, I always think of my childhood, think of my hometown, I miss my hometown so much, I miss my parents who are still living there. While saying that, tears filled his eyes. She was deeply touched. That's his true feeling, from the bottom of his heart. A man who can tell out his homesick, he must be a man who loves home, cares about home, has responsibility of home. Then she also started to speak, spoke about her faraway hometown, her childhood, her family. That was a really nice talk, also a beautiful beginning of their story. They continued to date, she found actually he was a man who meets all her demands. He had tolerance, was kind-hearted, warm, careful. He was such a good person but she almost missed him. Thanks to his salty coffee. Then the story was just like every beautiful love story. The princess married to the prince, then they were living the happy life. And, every time she made coffee for him, she put some salt in the coffee as she knew that's the way he liked it. After 40 years, he passed away, left her a letter which said. My dearest, please forgive me, forgive my whole life lie. This was the only lie I said to you, 
the salty coffee. Remember the first time we dated? I was so nervous at that time, actually I wanted some sugar, but I said salt. It was hard for me to change so I just went ahead. I never thought that could be the start of our communication. I tried to tell you the truth many times in my life, but I was too afraid to do that, as I have promised not to lie to you for anything. Now I'm dying, I afraid of nothing so I tell you the truth. I don't like the salty coffee, what a strange bad taste. But I have the salty coffee for my whole life since I knew you, I never feel sorry for anything I do for you. Having you with me is my biggest happiness for my whole life. If I can live for the second time, I still want to know you and have you for my whole life, even though I have to drink the salty coffee again. Her tears made the letter totally wet. Someday, someone asked her, what's the taste of salty coffee? It's sweet, she replied. My video ends here, thank you for watching. Goodbye and see you in the next video.